In this video, we are going to talk about atoms, elements, compounds, and mixtures. Okay, let's recall. What is matter? Oh. Oh. Okay, again, matter describes everything that has mass and takes up space. Also, we have said that matter is made up of atoms. Okay, so what are atoms? Atoms are the smallest units of matter that have the properties of a chemical element. Okay? Atoms are so small that you cannot see them with your eyes or even through standard laboratory microscope. Okay? And these are made up of smaller particles and some of these particles have an electrical charge associated with it. So a charge is a physical property which allows the particles to move through or remain still in an electromagnetic field. Wow. Crazy. Now let's talk about these smaller particles or what we call subatomic particles. We have three types of particles. Electrons, protons, and neutrons. Electrons are particles with a negative charge. Protons are particles with a positive charge. And lastly, neutrons have no charge. Okay, they are neutral. There is no notation to indicate a neutral charge. Now the question that you should be asking now, where can we see these particles? I don't want to. This shows the model of an atom. Protons and neutrons are located in what we call the nucleus or the center of the atom. Because protons have a positive charge and neutrons have no charge, we can say that the nucleus has an overall positive charge. Okay, we're thinking. Now the electrons here occupy clouds at certain energy levels and exist at a specific distance from the nucleus. We are going to discuss this more when we go to quantum energies. You have to take note that electrons, protons, and neutrons are actually not the smallest known particles of matter. There are smaller particles called leptons, muons, tau particles, and quarks. But that would be for the advanced chemistry. Now let us consider the number of these particles. A neutral atom or an atom without an overall charge will have the same number of protons and electrons. Because the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons, the atom has no overall charge. That's why it's neutral. Then we have a positive atom or an atom with a positive charge. A positive atom will have more protons than electrons. Okay, do not be confused with the equal sign and the less than sign. Okay, it just means that this positive atom may have the same number of electrons as the neutral atom, but the number of protons increased. Okay, or it could mean that the number of protons is the same, but the number of electrons lessened. Okay, that's why it's equal or less than. Next, we have negative atom. A negative atom will have more electrons than the protons. Now, atoms are usually classified as elements, right? Also known as pure substances. A pure substance is made up of only one type of atom or one type of molecule. A pure substance can be either an element or a compound. So fluorine, Oxygen, copper, sulfur are all examples of pure substances. And if you combine them, you'll have focus. Just kidding. <laughs> now what is the difference between a molecule and a compound? A molecule is two or more atoms joined together chemically. A compound, on the other hand, is a molecule that contains at least two different atoms or elements that are chemically combined in a fixed ratio. For example, table salt. Table salt is a compound because it contains sodium and chloride, or NaCl. Now I have a question. Is water a compound or a molecule? How do I explain it? 
Actually, water is both a molecule and a compound. Is it? Wait a damn minute! Again, a compound has two or more different atoms joined by chemical bonds. The chemical formula for water is H2O, which means each molecule of water consists of one oxygen atom chemically bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Thus, water is a compound. It's also a molecule, which is any chemical species formed by two or more atoms chemically bonded to each other. And how many atoms do we have in water? Three atoms. Two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Like, okay? Let's consider oxygen gas or O2. So oxygen gas is a molecule but not a compound. Same with O3 or ozone. Just remember, all compounds are molecules, but not all molecules are compounds. Now, what is a chemical substance? A chemical substance is any form of matter having constant chemical composition and characteristic properties. Other sources say that a chemical substance is something that can't be separated into its components by physical methods. For example, a diamond, okay, which is made up of entirely carbon. However, note that in practice, no substance is entirely pure, and chemical purity is specified according to the intended use of the chemical. Now let's go to compounds and mixtures. You have to remember that a compound is reacted chemically, meaning that each of its individual parts no longer retain their own properties. For example, sodium. Sodium or Na is a highly reactive silverish metal. We also have chlorine, which is a toxic yellow-green gas at room temperature. But when they combine chemically to become NaCl, the result is table salt, something that you can safely consume every day. The combinations of the parts of a compound are fixed. Okay, table salt is always NaCl, one atom of Na and one atom chlorine. We also have what we call mixture. A mixture is made up of two or more different substances that are combined. The substances are not chemically bonded, which means that a mixture can be separated into its original parts. An example of a mixture is a salad dressing. So this is made up of oil, vinegar, and maybe herbs or lemon juice. And in the salad, of course, you have the tomato, lettuce, etc. Now, there are two types of mixtures. First is the heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous mixtures contain substances that are not uniform in composition. The parts in the mixture can be separated by physical means. For example, pizza. Pizza is a heterogeneous mixture because every bite contains something different. Also, you can actually separate the ingredients, right? If you don't like the olive, you can remove it. If you don't like the ham or bacon, you can remove them. Next, we have the homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixtures are the same throughout and cannot be separated by physical means. For example, Milk. Milk is composed of water, fat, protein, lactose, or the sugar component of milk, and mineral, or the salts. These substances cannot be separated. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs>